Okay, so we're on the second part of this sheet here, starting with the sphenoid bone. Now to see a good view of the sphenoid, we've got two different options here. One is from the side. Okay, if we look at the side of the skull here, uh, right where your temple is, right back here, you can see these borders, these sutures right here and here. This little part right here is your sphenoid bone. Now back here is temporal, back here is parietal, but this little section is sphenoid. And this textbook will show you right here this image as well. Um, they did different colors on this. You can see they did the sphenoid in kind of a yellow color right here. But the best view of the sphenoid bone would be from the inside of the skull, and I don't think they show that in this book. Nope. Okay, so let's take a look on the inside, and I'll try to show you its borders. All right, so from a superior view of the skull, we're going to remove the skull cap here and take a look in there. Now, the sphenoid has all kinds of weird edges here, okay? It comes all the way up to here, down to here, back through here, and up. To me, it kind of looks like a bat, okay? You see those little bat ears right here? Here's his wings coming out like that, you know, like the Batman symbol. And then, uh, and then coming back up on this side. Now it covers a little over where the bat's head is, right up here. But this is the sphenoid bone. It's probably the most difficult bone besides the ethmoid to pick out the borders of. But you can see, guys, you see these rigid edges right here? That's where the sphenoid uh, ends and the temporal bone begins on each each side here but it comes all the way back to here there's a few different things to point out on the sphenoid bone one is something called the cella tersica I gotta tilt this a little bit to the side to see this and I'm gonna stick my finger in that see this thing that kinda looks like a saddle right here that's the cella tersica okay its name literally means Turkish saddle so that's why it's saddle uh, they, they gave it that name, saddle shaped. This is where your pituitary gland sits, it's right in this spot right here. I like to think of the pituitary gland as a cowboy, you know, if that helps you. I don't know how it would, but, you know. And he's sitting in this saddle. Well, your self-respecting cowboy's got to have a lasso, right? Okay. So, right next to him is this hole right here. Well, oh, it's tough to see. There's a hole on this side and a hole on this side. And so that's called the foramen lacerum. I think of it as like, you know, that's where he keeps his lasso. And folks, holes in the skull like this, there's either, there's two reasons they're opened up. One is nerve bundles travel through their cranial nerve bundles. And the other reason is what else needs to get in through there? Anybody? Somebody said it. Blood, yeah, blood vessels are traveling through these holes as well. Foramen lacerum right here. Now, if his feet go way out here, and to be clear, the pituitary gland does not have feet, okay? But, you know, think his feet riding out really wide here. These, these oval-shaped holes out to the side there, right next to the foramen lacerum, their name literally means oval-shaped holes. Foramen oval is what they're called. Foramen oval these oval shaped holes which are out to the side of the foramen lacerum and still in the sphenoid bone. Again the sphenoid bones borders all the way back to here and then they climbs up to this direction. Okay. Alright, so lacerum, foramen lacerum, foramen oval, cella tersica, and that gets us to sphenoidal sinus. Folks, there is nothing that is visible about the sphenoidal sinus in here. If I cut this skull in half, you still wouldn't be able to see it. But if it was a real skull, and I cut it in half on the sagittal plane through here, underneath here is another hollow chamber in this bone. That's the sphenoidal sinus. It's a hollow chamber inside of the sphenoid bone. Hollow chamber inside of the sphenoid bone. Now, I did miss one on here that I should have mentioned, okay? Uh, and that is the optic canal. Let me find another paper clip here. Okay, the optic canal is traveling 
to the eye. Okay. Um, so I send one through here. That's an optic canal. If you think of this as a little bat right here, the little bat's ears are the optic canal. I know that doesn't help oh, a little too far, but if you see where they stick out on this side, they come through the eye. So the optic nerve passes through here. And the way they're set up, gang, look at that. Because they're coming through like that, they look like they're, the optic nerves are going to cross over right there. And they do. They cross over here at a section called the optic chiasm so that the uh, half of the information gets sent to one part of your brain, the, half, the other half gets sent to the other part of your brain, like each of them sends it to the occipital lobe. I always found it interesting that your eyes, what your eyes see gets processed by the part of your brain that's furthest from the eyes. I never fully understood that, but that's how it works. So that's the optic canal right through there. One more time on the other stuff, cella tersica is the saddle. Foramen lacerum, right next to the saddle on either side. Foramen oval, off to this side here. And then optic canal going through that hole right there. Now that gets us to the ethmoid bone. Guys, this bone is really, really weird. It's really hard to point out, okay? From this view, the only part of the ethmoid bone you can see is just this little section right here. This is the only part of the ethmoid bone that's visible from inside of the skull. All the rest of this right here is frontal bone. Frontal bone, which makes up the front part right here. Now, that's not all the bigger that this is, because the ethmoid bone forms a good part of your nasal passage underneath. In fact, what divides the left side from the right side of your nasal passage at the top, if you can see in there, see this little divider right here? That's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone because it comes straight down to divide the sides here. These little ridges here, these turbinae on both sides are also part of the ethmoid bone. So the ethmoid bone does a, makes up a pretty good part of your nasal passage. Um, but on the ethmoid bone, besides the perpendicular plate, okay, which comes down straight up and down to separate right from left side of your nasal passage. That's why one side of your nasal passage can be stuffed up and the other one you can breathe through as they're separated in the middle. Now, it looks like there's a big hole there that you can, you know, air can go through to both sides. But remember, your nose is mostly cartilage. And this is finished out all the way to the end by cartilage. Um, looking through the top here, though, gang, we've got these, uh, this indented space right here. This is known as the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone. Cribiform plate. So that little dent in there is the cribiform plate and the perpendicular plate logically is perpendicular to it. So if you're looking down at the, this is the cribiform plate there, perpendicular to it is the perpendicular plate that separates the right and left side. Okay, now What's the difference between foramen and foramina? Any guesses? What's that? All right, I'll tell you. Uh, foramina is plural, okay? Foramen is singular, foramina is plural. Now you can't see them here. This is one of the would be a major advantage of having a real skull here as opposed to what I've got. They just show little dips in here. Okay. There's little tiny pits in here. In a real skull, there's hundreds if not thousands of little tiny holes going through here. Okay? Those are olfactory foramina. They are holes in the cribiform plate. Do you guys, have you ever heard the term olfactory or olfaction before? I'll give you a hint. It's one of your five senses, olfaction is. What sense is that? Smell, yeah. So this right here, okay? They say this is the only exposed part of your brain to the outside world. Sitting on top of this on either side, right here, oh, right here, and one down here, struggling here, are 
cranial nerve number one. That's a pair of nerves, and they sit right <coughs> there. And they have these cilia that go through those holes into your nasal passage. Those are called the cranial nerve number one, which is your olfactory nerve. And that's what tells your brain what you're smelling. It picks up the chemicals in the outside world. That's why there has to be these holes here to allow for those cranial nerves to pick up chemical messages from your nasal passage. Yeah. So that's what those are all about. Um, next. Maxilla. Okay, now it's going to get a lot simpler. That little section is probably the toughest part of the skull to get a hold of because it's all on the inside and it's kind of, you know, kind of messed up. All right. Maxilla, folks, is this part of your cheek here. Like all of your upper teeth are embedded into your maxilla. You can see where the two come together here. Now, sometimes they don't come together before birth and then children are born with what what's that known as a cleft palate that's right the maxilla is supposed to seal together before birth and then they can fix that surgically but uh, but these here this is the uh, right maxilla or maxillary bone something's called and this is the left maxilla and uh, the only features you need to know on it is this hole right here this hole is known as the infraorbital foramen, and I'll tell you why. Orbit is a term for your eye socket. Infra, like inferior, means below, and foramen means what? Hole. So this literally means hole below the eye socket. Okay. So all of your upper teeth are embedded into the maxilla. That's why people who do surgery on this, like removing wisdom teeth and stuff, uh, are called maxillofacial surgeons because they're the ones who are able to do surgery or studied specifically surgery to this uh, area yeah so that's I want to leave the other bones yeah we'll stop here at maxilla today and we'll uh, pick up with the facial bones on our next segment <laughs>